On January 15th, 2022, the Guild of Homileticians, those of us who research, write about, and teach preaching, lost its eldest member when the Reverend Dr. Henry H. Mitchell died at the age of 102. Henry, the son and grandson of preachers, was educated at Lincoln University, Union Theological Seminary, California State University, and Claremont School of Theology. After distinguished contributions to both academy and church, he turned his sights to the field of homiletics, which in 1970 was populated by white scholars. He, in that year, published his groundbreaking work, Black Preaching, in which he lifted up the genius of African-American preaching, tracing its history from the griot of Africa to the slave preacher to modern times. And in that work, he identified the genius of African-American preaching as celebration, the central dynamic that celebrates the sovereignty of God in the face of the persecutions and sufferings that have been wrought on the church. Following that thunderous debut, he published many books in preaching and he mentored many scholars in the field who continue to feel his influence and wield it with their students. We would be remiss if we did not mention, and his legacy would be slighted, if we did not note that many of his writings, preachings, and, and uh, lectures were in partnership with his beloved and gifted wife, Ella. In 2007, I had the privilege of hosting Henry along with Fred Craddock, Charles Rice, Eugene Lowry, and David Buttrick, address the question of how their minds had changed since they wrote their earliest books. As the conference grew near, I called Dr. Mitchell just to check in, and I, I asked him how his lecture was coming along and what he planned to say about what he would change about his early thoughts in light of cultural and ecclesial shifts since 1970. At the age of 88, he was as sharp as ever, and he answered me, well, not much, because no one has really tried my approach yet. Hmm. Well, as you'll see in the testimonies to follow, Dr. Mitchell was wrong in thinking that his ideas had not taken hold. These homileticians give witness to just how important Mitchell's work has been for the past half century and how those works continue to shape the hom homiletical conversation even today. Dr. Mitchell, we love you, we miss you, and we thank you for your life, for your ministry, and for your scholarship. When I think of Dr. Henry Mitchell passing from this plane to the next, I am very, very tempted to say a bright light has dimmed forever. But then I think of his life and his work, the ways in which he has helped shape conversations in homiletics, the ways in which he has shaped Black preaching and preaching writ large on the ground. I'm reminded that I would not be here, nor my work, nor the work of unknown generations to come if it were not for him. With these thoughts, I'm convicted of a different truth. We have been gifted with a light that will burn eternal. What an extraordinary gift. What an extraordinary testimony to a life well lived. I am truly grateful to have been graced with such a gift this time around the sun. In his book, Black Preaching, Dr. Henry Mitchell, the progenitor of Black homiletics, affirms the vernacular as the mother tongue of the spirit. By doing so, he asserts the divine affirmation of the Black tongue and idiom of preaching. His work blaze the trail for future scholarship that affirms the beauty, genius, dignity, and worth of the Black church in general and Black preaching in particular for intellectual and spiritual interrogation. I met Dr. Mitchell through Dr. Dale Andrews at an Academy of Homiletics meeting many years ago. And early in my tenure at Duke, Dr. Mitchell called me to affirm my Black tongue in scholarship and ministry. I'm grateful that this elder took the time to call. He didn't have to do that. So as his work emphasized, I celebrate him and thank God for the life, witness, and scholarship of Dr. Henry Mitchell. Henry Mitchell was a giant in homiletics. Uh, I can think of no one who combined not only a, a, a beautiful, in, insightful, 
uh, approach to preaching uh, and who knew the field of homiletics and homiletic theory inside out, but had a powerful way of linking the work of homiletics to culture and to cultural life and expression. I can say that I had the wonderful fortune of experiencing Henry as a teacher. Uh, he came to Vanderbilt 30 years ago when I was a wet behind the ears graduate student at Vanderbilt University. I was studying with David Buttrick in those days, but Henry Mitchell came to be our visiting professor more than once. Uh, I had the experience of taking his course and uh, I had the unrepeatable experience of having Henry Mitchell offer me feedback on a sermon while his wife Ella helped out. Uh, it was a gift. Henry was a gift and I am ever grateful for his life, his work, his contribution, and just for who he was. I had the honor of knowing Reverend Dr. Henry H. Mitchell for almost 40 years. Dr. Mitchell was a person who loved homiletics, the history of homiletics, the entire breadth of the discipline. And it was because of his intentional work that he allowed us to understand that black preaching was not an add-on, but was intricate to the entire genre of preaching. Dr. Mitchell taught and impact hundreds, dare I say thousands of preachers, including some of the top voices, the, the, the premier black preachers in the United States and around the world. He will be greatly missed because of his passion, his excellence, and his friendship. Thank you. I am a student of Dr. Henry H. Mitchell. I am just so thankful and blessed that he came into my life. I was a pastor who was trying to improve um, my preaching on a Sunday by Sunday basis, picked up his recovery of preaching and adopted the celebrated preaching style. I then entered a D-men group with him so that I could grow at my preaching as a pastor. And he called out of me this uh, ability and this uh, call to teach African-American preaching. I had no idea that I teach African-American preaching. He called me to it and called me out to do it. He just really, really, he's been such an influence and I'm so thankful, so grateful, and so appreciative. I just, without Henry H. Mitchell, my life would be very different and I'm so thankful that he is now living as an ancestor in God's perpetual light. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Henry H. Mitchell, and I miss you deeply. In the fall of 1984, Dr. Henry Mitchell came to Duke Divinity School to offer the fall lectures. Henry also preached at the chapel. By the conclusion of those lectures and that sermon, it was clear that I had found a most profound and accomplished African-American colleague to explore in my book, A New Hearing. Henry graciously provided the manuscript of the sermon he had preached that morning, and that follows my analysis in the book. Henry was gracious in his generosity to me, and that began a wonderful season of evocative conversations between us. I have long grieved the passing of his beloved Ella, and now we add Henry to the list of our homiletical saints. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Amen. So one of my favorite memories with uh, Dr. Mitchell is when I was working on the last book on those preaching women with Mother, El Mother Ella Mitchell and he and I would debate on who needed to be in the book and he would talk about the homiletic style of different people. And just to have him in that conversation made me so happy. I'm thankful to have been embraced by him to be mentored by him, to be loved by him and by his wife. They were together for good and their good lives on in us. I am thankful even as I mourn, I am joyful for his 100 plus years and for the gift he has been and was and will continue to be to all of us. Among many homiletic lessons I've learned from Henry Mitchell, there is something that forever changed my perception of preaching and the practice of preaching. That is the holistic 
as they approach to the interpretation of scriptures and the related multi-sensory performative delivery of liberative bridging. Before Mitchell's theoretic works of preaching, the practice of preaching was very much rationalistic, argumentative, and somehow bodiless, as well as highly text-driven and human philosophy-oriented. Dr. Mitchell helped me a lot uh, overcome that highly Hellenized and Eurocontinental pitfalls in the practice of preaching. For that, I am forever grateful to Dr. Mitchell. Dr. Henry Mitchell put the genius of African-American preaching on paper, and he did it in a way that combined the rigor of academic scholarship with the truth and contextuality of African-American preaching traditions. He helped his readers understand that all preaching needs something to celebrate. It needs some good news. And all preaching should not only appeal to the head, but also to the heart. And when Black women called him out about leaving us, our history, out of his first written history of Black preaching, he heard our voices and did better. He changed. His ability to adapt and change with the times was emblematic of not only his academic prowess, but also of his heart as a preacher, as a mentor and as a friend. Dr. Mitchell will be sorely missed, but he will forever be in our hearts. In the fall of 1990, when my first sabbatical rolled around, I wrote Henry and Ella Mitchell, teaching at the Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, and asked if I could come down for the semester, observe their teaching and talk with them about African-American preaching we packed up and moved to Atlanta for the year, and when I arrived, Henry embraced me like a long-lost relative. I encountered there the scholar that I expected, precise, hardworking, demanding, and yet with a friendly edge. In the classroom, I observed a master teacher who could lecture for a long time holding the group in the palm of his hand, and who was equally agile leading a seminar group respecting the dignity of all and enhancing the participation of each. I came home not only with all that, but with a new appreciation of shared leadership as embodied by Henry and Ella. For all these things and more, I give thanks for Henry and Ella having been among us. Thank you for this opportunity to honor the Reverend Dr. Henry H. Mitchell, preacher, teacher, standard bearer, preeminent homiletician, and champion of the African-American preaching tradition. I met Dr. Mitchell in the 1980s at the Lake Hill Bible Retreat in Florida's Ocala National Forest. He had come to preach and teach with a group of gospel singers about the significance of the Black church and its preaching tradition through lectures that became sermons and sermons that stirred our souls. When I arrived at Candler School of Theology in 1996, I realized that the sweatsuit clad preacher from the forest was a scholar extraordinaire whose work would become formative for my own preaching. In 1999, Dr. Ella Mitchell was among those who catechized me and Dr. Henry Mitchell welcomed me to the gospel ministry through the laying on of hands and through his words of affirmation in the sermon he preached. I am thankful to be counted among those who stand upon his shoulders and whose lives he touched. Dr. Henry Mitchell not only is a treasure in the field of preaching and in the church life of America, Dr. Henry Mitchell is indeed a gift to the kingdom of God everywhere. During more than a century of his long and fruitful life, it is incalculable how many ministers Dr. Mitchell touched. By this time, not only those he taught have taught others, but even in a whole other generation, those he taught taught others who were teaching 
still others. He was one of the first, if not the very first, to put his hands on the distinctive features of African American preaching, particularly the emotive and celebratory features, teaching us that you really do not get to person's will and volition without touching them at the level of pathos, emoting, and celebration. Henry Mitchell was a man of small stature, but he cast a long shadow. His work of bringing black preaching into the widest sphere of homiletics, in fact, as intrinsic to the new homiletic, was foundational for many of us who came after him. I was privileged to be a part of a conversation with Dr. Mitchell about the possibility of putting out a second edition of his book, Black Preaching. He was so humble. He couldn't figure out why anyone would want to read his work so long after it had been written. But I know that his legacy will live on beyond those of us who are in the field today into the future of those who come long after he's gone. I thank God for the 100 plus years of his life. And I give thanks for the opportunity to have sat at his feet. For all of that and for what he has left behind, I say thanks be to God. I think Henry Mitchell would caution us against speaking of him as a first. After all, he, he taught us about traditions of Black sacred speech extending across centuries, millennia, continents. And he worked self-consciously in a tradition of Black scholarly reflection on sacred speech that included Zora Neale Hurston, W.E.B. Du Bois, and many more. But Henry Mitchell's work was so generative. It did so much to open up space for Black homiletics, so much to press white homileticians to reckon with our false pretensions to universality, so much to inspire womanist, feminist, Asian, Asian American, Latinx, queer, and many other life-giving homiletics that we just have to reach for words like first to describe the difference he made. For after Henry Mitchell, the whole field is different. And all of us who care about preaching are blessed by that difference. Without a doubt, Henry Mitchell put black preaching on the homiletical map. It's not that others had not written about black preaching before Mitchell, but Mitchell wrote about it in a very sustained and robust manner. And he was very proud of his gatekeeper status when it came to the intellectual black preaching tradition. I was admitted into Princeton's PhD program in 1990, and I met Mitchell shortly thereafter at an AOH meeting. And I said to him that I was going to write on black preaching. And he looked at me and said, why you can't write on black preaching and I not know you? Well, I did get to know him and I did write on black preaching. Henry Mitchell was a great man and he is worthy of any and all honors that we can bestow upon him. Dr. Mitchell's commitment to describing the specific wisdoms of black preaching at the same time that he insisted on these wisdoms necessary relevance to preachers outside the black church gives me hope that we can listen carefully to each other and be changed by what we hear. Last week I was in my intro class and we were talking about various definitions of preaching and I, I read out Mitchell's affirmation of celebration in preaching despite the hardest circumstances. And it was a white Episcopal woman who raised her hand and she said, I'm so grateful for the pastoral attentiveness in these words. This is clearly a preacher who was paying attention to people. So thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you for paying attention to the particularity of the Black church and to blind spots in North American homiletics and to students who are still being changed by what they hear in your words. When I first started teaching, I would take my preaching students on a bus down to Detroit to hear the preaching of Dr. Charles G. Adams and to experience the worship of Hartford Baptist Church. Henry H. Mitchell, through his homiletical writing, likewise opened wide the doors of the Black Church to me and gave all of us who teach preaching 
a foundational vocabulary with which to talk about the beauty and power of what we found there. His understanding of celebration set a new standard in preaching, and it was beyond the Black church. It was a standard that recognized the preaching needed to get to God and what God was doing. And that was the source of real celebration. Many years ago, Drs. Henry and Ella Mitchell visited my home congregation as guest preachers. This is a traditional AME church. They came to the pulpit together and preached a dialogue sermon that drew on the best of Black sacred rhetoric while expanding our view of what was possible. And that's what Dr. Henry Mitchell did in so many different ways as a teacher and as a scholar. He honored women's voices and he lifted up the treasures of black history. His scholarship anchors my own and I am deeply grateful for his extraordinary witness. As we celebrate the life and mourn the passing of Dr. Henry H. Mitchell, our debts to this sage centenarian, theorist, historian, homiletician, linguist are incalculable. This book would have been incomplete. So with this one and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this book would have been incomplete. This one, you don't talk about the journey and the promise without talking about Dr. Henry H. Mitchell, as well as this one. So we are greatly indebted to this genius of a scholar who walked among us. And for that, I want to personally express my appreciation and gratitude.